today is the 8th of April, 1994. And Adeline Medaglia is taking a videotape of Sylvia Salmonson beside me here. And uh, she started the Galleria San Miguel in 1962 and has been keeping its head above water by her, by crook maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes it's Ever hard. since. <laughs> And um, she's had such a long and wonderful experience here that I'd like to, you to know about it. Sylvia, when did you first arrive and why in San Miguel? After my husband had finished art school in Chicago, I had saved up, I had saved up enough money to come to Mexico. And we toured all over Mexico. And, uh, we had some money left and we were on our way home. And I looked at the map and I said, oh, there's that San Miguel de Allende that the Rogaways from Taos told us about. Instead of go going on to Leon or Celaya, the old Pan American Highway, we came to San Miguel. And we stayed at the Posada de San Francisco. It was December, either 12th or 14th, I don't remember the date right off first night of the Posadas, and I couldn't believe such a spectacle could ever be, you know, really, oh, children and burros and candles and singing and church all lit up. It, it was just lovely. But we were going to be taking off the following day until we met a couple by the name of Alberto and Suzanne Tomei. They were from uh, Quebec. And they told us that they had just found, they're both artists, and they had found a house for $25 a month. And we're all excited about it. They had two children. So we said, how wonderful. And they said, we saw some apartments for $10 a month up on Santo Domingo. So we trod up there just to take a look, not really intending to stay. And everybody was so hospitable and so wonderful. And we moved right in, went to a big party. That's where we met Augusta and Jeanette and Mac and all 40 of the foreign. We uh, met all the foreign co colony of San Miguel, all 40 of them at that one party. People such as Augusta Irving, Norman Schmidt, who wrote under the name of James Norman, uh, the Magruders, uh, Jeanette and Mac Reynolds, and on and on, all wonderful people. Shall I go on? Yes. <laughs> now, this was in the year 1952, I think. Right, yes. 1952. So it was really a very small colony. I mean, there was one taxi cab in the whole town. Uh, the canals, the water were, the canals, the water canals were running up and down the street yet. <laughs> uh, the children would play in the Hardeen on Sundays all starched. Those little girls were so adorable with their nanas. The music would play. It was just a wonderful way to live. Then tell, tell about Jeanette Reynolds and what she did to you. <laughs> oh, Jeanette was... Uh, she had her nose in everything. She was a big, sturdy lady. Her hair in a ponytail. And two days after we were here, she came up with two little dachshunds that someone had abandoned and thought that we needed the dogs, so we did. We named one after her husband, Plotz, because <laughs> he was a rider. Uh, Mac was a rider, and um, the other one we named Tina. I don't know why, but they lived to be like 20 years old, 18, 20. Well, now, who walked the dogs, or how did you oh. exercise them? Come on. Well, up on Santo Domingo, you know, there was no traffic, nothing. So my husband would take the two little doxies and walk up, walk up toward what is now the Hotel Atascadero, because there wasn't a hotel up there. And uh, he used to pass Sterling Dickinson's house. I guess Sterling 
watch this man walking two dogs, because at that point, I think Stormy had about four or five Airedales. And uh, they got to talking, and so he asked Fred if he would like to teach at the Instituto. Uh, we had no idea, of, you know, that Fred would even work here or that uh, Sterling even knew anything about Fred's background, about his being a, had his MFA from the Chicago Art Institute, or that he knew how to teach. But because he had the dogs, that's why. <laughs> that's the wonderful part mm -hmm. of this. That's why he asked him to teach, I'm sure. Yeah. I don't know if Sterling would admit it now, you know. No. But that was the reason. And on we stayed. And, my, and, and uh -huh. moved up in the world and oh, into a house. And oh, gosh. A year later, we moved into a house where we paid, I can't remember right now, I think it was 25 or $35 a month. And we were in that house about 13 years, you know. It was, my kids were brought up in that house. And there's a big arroyo, millions of steps all over. They never nothing, fell in. nothing ever happened to them. No. <laughs> I, don't, I must have been out. I'll well, we're going to continue this interview at Sylvia's house up in the Atascadero. Just okay. an early house yeah. there, actually. There the, were just two or three houses. Yeah. Second house to be built up there, really. The cans were first. The cans, uh -huh. and then Dottie Hall, the, the, the Jack Oh, Betty Hall, yeah. And Betty Hall, yeah. Uh -huh. and then so then you moved up there. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That was. So it would be very interesting to see your we, personal collection. Uh -huh. We bought the property before they had any roads up there or electricity. Mm -hmm. yeah. electricity. Very goodbye. At that time, <laughs> it was fantastic. Well, how long did you stay in the apartment for ten dollars a month? Did you move oh, on in the world? Yeah, we moved oh. on in the world. We went down in the Huerta del Señor Cura, they used to call it then, uh -huh. for twenty-five dollars a month, oh. and that was a complete house, yeah. some furniture, you know. Mm -hmm. But we were neighbors of uh, the Schmitz, mm -hmm. the Magruders. The Smarts were sort of up in, near there. Yes, they yeah. were on Calvario by yeah. this point. Yeah. You know, they had built their house. Yeah. And we had a great time. And in could, it was safe, wasn't it? Oh, very. Oh, safe. dear God, yes. It was so safe. What was the t first scandal? That <laughs> <laughs> well, our first scandal was Helen Chase walking down Aldama. Helen Chase was a lovely spinster, must have been in her 70s. <laughs> and walking down Aldama, somebody goosed Helen. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> I mean, the following day, everybody knew about it, you know. Did you hear? Oh, poor Helen Chase was goosed, you know. <laughs> we loved it, we loved it. That was the big scandal. Because everything, you know, we would talk about yeah. in, in, at the yeah. Bougainvillea that was on the square. Everybody would go there for coffee. Mm -hmm. That's what, or you'd make your dates, like uh, come on over for a drink. And you'd have either rum, tequila, and a hunk of cheese, and that was it. Mm -hmm. No formal parties ever, you know. Oh, you'd meet was, at each other's houses uh -huh. and have some well, simple food, I simple, guess. Simple, yeah. very simple. Uh, but uh, then... 
suddenly this paradise exploded with the murder. It, it exploded for a while. Mm -hmm. And then they cooled it off, I, mm -hmm. I think. I mean, don't quote me, but <laughs> I think they let this man escape, you know, the one that they had gotten. Because he murdered uh, a couple, hadn't yes, he? Yes, he had murdered a couple of and, uh, um, Americans. Yeah. Uh, I remember, well, I was, had been here by then. No. So then, how did you get along with the Mexican community? I mean, there were some very prominent intellectuals mm -hmm. that you met at that time. Miguel Malo. And Miguel everything. Malo and Lucha Mojica. Yeah. I got along with them just fine because I had been brought up in New Mexico, so I had Spanglish, mm -hmm. uh, you know, more, okay, Spa more, sp more Spanish, more Spanish, more Spanish than say my husband or other people, yeah. and so they considered me one of one them. Of them. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And Miguel Malo said, asked me one time, where did I learn this ranchero Spanish? <laughs> I said, very crushing, uh -huh. ranchero <laughs> Spanish, and he said. Oh yes, he says, you know, if you go out to the ranches, these people who do not, have not gone to school, they don't know modern Spanish, <laughs> we call it ranchero Spanish. So I said, oh, New Mexico, you know, that's where the Spanish has been there like forever. Yes. So it is real ranchero. I then went back to school, studied, studied under Miguel Malo and Dr. Olcina, then to the academia to try to I cleanse myself <laughs> of my ranchero Spanish. <laughs> mm -hmm. And having failed to get a job steadily as a nurse, what was your next uh, job? I was um, taking care of uh, rentals. Mm -hmm. I mean, say. But you were also taking care of little kitties at the Institute uh, of Faculty. Right. You? I was the first little teacher, the <laughs> first teacher for these little kitties, you know, for summer programs. And I wasn't really a teacher, you know. But I did teach them to go to the bathroom and wipe themselves and things like that because they were all small. Very mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they were all small. We used to march and sing and silly things. So I've done a lot of those silly things in San Miguel. Well, tell me about some of the other people who are innovators here, like Helen Whaley must have known. Oh, her. of course. Helen was a dear friend of mine. And we used to spend uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. etc. together. And that's we, then we met Norman McGregor, her, mm -hmm. her cousin. Mm -hmm. And uh, but Helen was so interesting because she used to have magazines in her home, and kitties used to go in there and look at her magazines and books. That was really the start of the library. That was the start it? of the library. Yes. Mm -hmm. And didn't they give a breakfast? For Ninos, you helped with that? I helped with that. We'd get up at 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, and we'd go feed, you know, give them their little apples, etc., etc. And uh, then uh, the state came in, and they implied and said that these were their children, and they were going to take care of them. Mm -hmm. So we bowed out. Mm -hmm. Same thing happened when Sadie Levy was giving duplicate bridge classes, mm -hmm. and she was taking care of the orphanage. Well, I think in a way the same situation exists today, even the, the ladies at Tal rather resent other activities for the elderly and so on, so. Is that happening now too? No, I think so. Uh -huh. um, oh. The Mexican ladies felt that um, not the ones who own ranches or so mm -hmm. on, that they were looking after their people properly, which yes. having visited a good many ranches, I you do don't know <laughs> how, <laughs> how much they're uh -huh. looking after their I people. I think for they uh, mm -hmm. look after the emergencies, you know, yeah. I've heard that. They do pay the bills sometimes mm -hmm. in emergencies. The bridal. But they weren't usually volunteers in good works. No, it wasn't in their no. culture, was it? It wasn't, no. and it still, I don't think it still is too much. No. I it's think it's growing in the uh -huh. younger generation. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. but, but the older people don't get involved.
I oh. think the Americans and Canadians are doing a wonderful job with mm -hmm. the volunteers. You did have some Mexican friends, though, like Senori Senora Puga. <laughs> Pews, who was one of my dear friends, and of course, Carmen Masip. Yeah. I knew her when she they had just gotten married and came to San Miguel. And the Arteaga family have always mm -hmm. been my fa my friends. Yeah. And how about the uh, Cabuenas? How did they come along? Oh, well, he came along first. He was on scholarship and uh, at the Instituto. And he was taking lessons from Fred, your husband? <sighs> he was he was already a painter, so he just used space. You know, uh -huh. he was just yeah. uh, using studio space. I don't think he learned from anybody. Uh, he was quite the guy around town. <laughs> and then Nina came along in a little convertible, that was the prettiest little, and she was gorgeous. Oh, she was stunning. Oh, she was gorgeous. And I remember her driving around the Hardeen in this beautiful convertible. <laughs> and uh, somehow or other they met. And she went back to Canada and burned all her bridges there yeah. and came back here and married him. I was at their wedding. Oh, really? Uh-huh. That was on the... Uh, at the and he was, he was attractive. I mean, well, quite the ladies' man, eh? Oh, quite the ladies' mm -hmm. man, yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were married at the, on the grounds at the Instituto. Must have been quite oh, picturesque. Oh, it was beautiful. She was all in pink. Oh. And she looked gorgeous. Well, now, when, when did you start the gallery then? Well, up till this point, there's a, there's a group of painters that used to meet every week, you know, Leonard and Harold and... Fred, Court uh, Lang, Kent mm -hmm. Bowman, Pinto. Mm -hmm. They used to critique each other's work. And uh, there were no galleries. No. So we decided, let's start a gallery. Well, all of us can put in $25 a month to keep it going. Mm -hmm. We could afford that. That's about it. Mm -hmm. And so in this gallery, were the Schmitz and the Wilkinsons, the Brooks, the Cartlangs, the Blacks, and ourselves. Mm -hmm. The Pintos hadn't come then. They were here. Oh, but they didn't. They, no. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't belong okay. to that. Uh, mm -hmm. They, they didn't want, they didn't want to work. Rushka was working at the Instituto mm -hmm. and uh, all these other ladies were kind of free. Uh, who were your clients at this gallery now? Were the Mexicans? No, they were American. Mm -hmm. They were all American clients at that point. A matter of fact, uh, it was five or six years before we sold to a Mexican. And mm -hmm. I remember the Mexican that we sold to. I went out and oh, had a so drink that night. Uh -huh. <laughs> had a drink that night. The first Mexican, and it was Manuel. Ramirez, from the Ramirez family, uh -huh. he bought mm -hmm. a small John Wheat, the first Mexican in six years. Now, you know, it's kind of... Mm -hmm. Half and half. No, it's reversed. I think it's the majority of our clients are Mexican, yeah. and maybe 20% are Americans, mm -hmm. Canadians, foreigners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there were a couple of... Uh, quite colorful, wealthy ladies in town. Oh, <laughs> yes. Bessie James mm -hmm. and Lorenza Story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were fantastic, very wealthy ladies, and had good taste in everything, you know, even how they dressed. <laughs> <laughs> and they were very good clients, really good clients. They helped us a lot. And where were uh, you first located? Under the Portal, Portal mm -hmm. Allende. Next mm -hmm. to Bugamilia. Mm -hmm. That's a good... Uh-huh. We were going to take over... That's the East Portale, y'all. Yeah. Uh-huh. We were going to... Where Casa Canale is now, that was available mm -hmm. for 200 pesos a month. Mm -hmm. But okay. all the roofs needed to be fixed, etc. Mm -hmm. So we took this other location, and we were paying much more. We were paying 600 pesos a month. Mm 
Mm. And that was, I think the dollar then was like 12. Eight or 12, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. way down, mm -hmm. wasn't it? So it was very reasonable, and we used to take turns working the gallery. Um, you, for many years, were the only gallery in town. For almost 20. I mean, galleries would open in this interim and close, you know. Mm -hmm. But you stuck at it, and uh, oh. I remember one time you told me you sold a desk to pay the rent. I had a beautiful desk, a roll-top desk, mm -hmm. and people all admired it. One Mexican couple had told me, if you, you ever want to sell it, call us. Well, rent time was coming up. I didn't have enough rent, so I called them, and they bought my desk. Mm -hmm. My whole life was in there, you know, because it had all of Little darling drawers. And oh, I oh, love oh, it was a really. And most of the other partners that you bought out by this time, hadn't you? We started oh. buying them out one by one. I mm -hmm. think the first ones out were the Brooks. Hmm? So, so then the uh, the core things, of course, left after a while, and uh, the blacks. Uh, they were the last ones to hang in yeah. there. And then they bought the Pegaso, I guess, that place. They already had the Pegaso oh. going, mm -hmm. uh, Lois and Harold. Yeah. But Harold, he just loved to be in the gallery, you know? Mm -hmm. Couldn't stop talking, da da da. You mean he'd grab a client? No, no, me. I mean, I oh. was, because I was in the gallery most of the time. <laughs> and though I love Harold very much, I couldn't stand him, you know? It was one of those things. Mm -hmm. So I said to my husband, either they buy us out or we buy them out. So it ended up we bought them out because mm -hmm. they had the Picasso mm -hmm. and the school going. And that's how I ended up being this, like the sole holder. Yes. You know? <laughs> but yeah. it's been fun. I've had a lot of wonderful artists. Good Who client. did you have to start with? You, just your own group, and, and, a, few and a, a lot of others like Robert Maxwell mm -hmm. and um, John Wheat, who came in. Yeah. yeah, Ed Osman, who's been here a long time. Mm -hmm. Irv Kazmarek. Mm -hmm. Then we had a number of uh, Mexico City who wanted uh, to show. With they you. wanted to show oh. here in San Miguel. That was, it was an exciting time. Mm. This is a picture. Okay. Um, Lillian Birkenstein. She was a wonderful client. She was one of our madrinas. We had madrinas when we opened the gallery. <sighs> and it was um, Bessie James, Lorenzo Story, Lillian, Eleanor Can, and Helen Whale. Mm -hmm. And of all those people, all those five ladies, there's only one left, and that's Eleanor. Do you remember Eleanor Ken? Oh, yes. She's up in Indiana, mm -hmm. Indiana uh, near Indianapolis somewhere. I understand. Quite ill. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, this is Lorenzo Story, Bessie James, Lillian Birkenstein, Helen Whale, and Eleanor Ken. These four ladies are deceased. This lady is still oh, alive, thank God. And at one of our openings was Sterling Dickinson, Admiral Charlton, and his wife, Vaughn. Nova was one of our very good artists that exhibited here in our gallery. Back in 1963, I guess. Our artist, another one of our artists was Sigrid Gurry, who used to be a movie actress and an artist, and she lived in San Miguel until she, until she passed away. Betty Hall was one of our very good clients. She still lives, I think, in Oregon or, or in uh, California. And these are two of our <laughs> most famous artists, Romero Tabuena and James Pinto, and their wives. Nina is also a fine artist, and Rushka. Rushka Pinto was a doll. Yeah. What, what, what can I say about her? Back in the 50s, early 60s, we had a one-man show of 
Miguelito Malo, he's a professor uh, and director of Bellas Artes and some of his collection. Carlos, ¿no nos puedes encender esta luz también? These are the founders of Galería San Miguel back in 1962, starting with Harold Blank, Leonard Brooks, Margaret Schmidt, Dietrich Cortlang, Lucille Wilkinson, and Fred Samuelson. And this is right under the portal where the gallery started. Augusta Early, whom I met in 1952, the second day we were here, at a party at the Huerta del Señor Cura. I can't remember just who gave that party, but there were about 40 Americans and Canadians. The whole foreign colony was there. And at the end of the party, Augusta took off with some young Mexican guy on a motorcycle with her rebozo flying out in the air. You know, she's so dramatic. And that was Augusta. At the op when we had our opening back in '62, there was a photo. This is a photo of Leonard Brooks, Professor Miguel Malo, Carmen Masip, the Hawkins, and River Brooks. And then we we had a couple of one-man shows of Robert Maxwell, who was a fine painter, a marvelous draftsman, and who founded the Casa Maxwell. What can I say about myself? <laughs> Except, you know, when we're getting the gallery ready, uh, cans of paints, paintings, etc., etc. Dieter Cortland did our logo. And this is years two and many years later. The ladies that did most of the work when we founded the gallery were Weaver Brooks, Lois Black, Lucille Wilkinson, Margaret Schmidt, Erica Cortlang, and Sylvia. Yo. The hard, the hardworking ladies. <laughs> it's going to get harder and harder. Uh, were Reva Brooks, Lois Hobart Black, Lucille Wilkinson, Margaret Fox Schmidt, Erica Cortland, and Sylvia. Another person that was very uh, important around here, of course, was Nell. Now, you were quite a friend of Nell's, weren't you? Can oh, you tell us anything about Nell? Uh, she was the most beautiful lady, you know. Mm -hmm. Vivacious. Had fun all the time. I met her when she was still married to Don Enrique. And um, uh, she was much more formal then, you know, when she was married to him. And after he died, she kind of let, yeah. let loose a little bit. She didn't have to keep up. No, she didn't. <laughs> no, she didn't. And we've traveled together. She's, she had a great mind. And there was just no stopping now, you know. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget visiting the Vance Packards in uh, Chappaquiddick. Mm -hmm. And they said, and I don't know if you want to hear this, and what do you do now? And she said, oh, I have a string of whorehouses, and I call them the Safeway. You know, <laughs> <laughs> then, you know. Well, of course, it shook all these New Englanders up. <laughs> It really was, you know, and this is, this is Nell. Yes, you know, she's, she's just sailing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, um, how did your husband and you get your working papers in those days? Through the Instituto, you had to be a student uh, for five years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I took Spanish, <laughs> and <laughs> Spanish, and silver work, and photography. Not that it took, you know. But I took it. 
and uh, of course he was working there. Mm -hmm. So after five years of working, then you get your FM2s. Yeah. And that's when I got my FM2 back in the 50s. It was that simple, really. And you didn't have to have X number of dollars for income or anything. Well, there weren't as uh, many problems as no. there have been oh, recently oh, here. There's been yeah. a real scandal about it all. Uh, but I think it's resolved itself, seemingly. Uh -huh. Well, somebody was saying that they seem to remember that about 10 weeks ago or 10 months ago in Atencion, there was a big story how all the mess up at the immigration was solved. <laughs> but, oh, no, but it really wasn't. <laughs> no. But uh, Santiago's married to Sarah, and she'll straighten them out. Right. <laughs> oh, Sarah's a bright, well, of course oh. he is too. You know, he's come a long oh, way. Oh, she, uh, she, she's helped him. Oh, uh huh. I think. I think the mind was there. It just needed yeah. channeling. Yeah. Well, uh, are there, do you think that Salinas Gortari has made a great many changes? People, I've heard people complain that it's too much red tape and oh, tax, definitely. Back taxes oh, yeah. More. Do tell us about that. How it's affected you? It's affected me. In, in, that I think that he has tried to make a first world country out of a third world without a second a step. A second step. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's affected me a great deal because he got a, a lot of young people working in the fiscal mm -hmm. and they started auditing all of us or a great deal. And it was, you know, we were very casual. Like the accountant I had before I thought I was on a straight path, but she uh, evidently didn't know all the rules and regulations, okay? Things like I had only one bank account, and that was personal and gallery and da 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 da. You know? <laughs> oh, God, so did sorry they, that out. they got me on that. And I had to account for, you know, every birthday check I got from my mother that I used to put in the account. Where did that money come from? And I had to get letters from her, you know, things like that, yeah. uh -huh. mm -hmm. saying that she back and back. And then another problem probably was that so many of the help wished to be paid in cash. They didn't want anything to do with the government. They still don't. No. Uh, they st I mean, uh, so you have people. So you have a lot of cash, and how do you account uh, for that? Uh, well, you take a loss. Hard. You take a loss when you have to have that cash because you have, say, your framer who doesn't want to register, will not give you a factura. And uh, all these little people that work for you, that do things for you, mm -hmm. they are not registered with it and don't want to get registered. So mm -hmm. you have to pay them in cash, which is, then it's hard to account for that money that you need. <laughs> Where did you get that money to pay them in cash? Uh, you know? So I guess the galleries were particularly hard hit, were they, and restaurants too? or? Uh, well, I only know of another gallery. At uh, yeah. they, oh, they got them. They went in, to them, they went in and sealed off everything. Mm -hmm. Their desks, their uh, archivos uh, sealed them. Uh, with me, they citar me. I had to go to uh, Celaya to appear before them. Mm -hmm. But they didn't seal my desk, they didn't seal my archivos. I, I really didn't know what they were after, you know. So, and my accountant then backed down. She said her mother was sick. So I had to, a little, oh, little, yeah, yeah, little Maria and I, my little helper in the gallery, used to go to Celaya every week to, with different papers each time. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you think. I think it'll work in the end, but it's been a little too fast, is that it? <laughs> I think in the end, people are trying to straighten out their books. I don't know about the, the gente, gente. Mm -hmm. the, the framer, the tin framer, the mm -hmm. wood framer, they don't want to get involved. They're so frightened. They don't want to register. Even though you tell them they don't have to pay taxes until they make a lot of money, you know, but they don't want to, even your artists, I'm having trouble with the artists wanting to register. Mm -hmm. And I say, you know, you have to sell like 30 million pesos 
before you start paying taxes. <laughs> they don't but they don't want to get on mm -hmm. the books. Mm -hmm. or is on it the work? books, That's the right? Thing. I've heard that over and over. Again. So I've had to turn down a lot of wonderful artists for that reason, and uh, I, oh, I think we are, we're all just about registered right now mm -hmm. <laughs> in the gallery. But I, I do see signs of movement among the population. They used to be so quiescent. It seems to me now they're not so quiescent. Right, you're right. It's, it's a changing world now, mm -hmm. Letitia. Yeah. It's. Well, it's been a hard time, I'm sure, with the Chiapas scare and the sl economic Yes, e even the my and wonderful and Mexican clients have stopped buying. Ugh. And the people that come down from Canada and from the United States seem to be quite budgeted. Yeah. No, the wealthy them. people, you know, mm -hmm. Americans and Canadians, have homes here. Mm -hmm. And the other ones that come to settle here have already, I mean, they're retiring here and they don't want to have a big collection anymore. They've gotten rid of that and given yeah. it to their kids right. and are settling for a a small apartment or a condo. Mm -hmm. So it, it's tough right now. Mm -hmm. But we'll hang in there. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, if you've hung in since 62, <laughs> that's 30 odd years. 30 odd years. <laughs> hard to years. believe it when you look at you. Well, it's hard to believe that, I mean, it's gone by so fast. Like, I got here five years ago, it feels like, mm -hmm. you know? And Everything how old are is still. Your kids now? Oh, let's see. One was born in 60 and one was born in 58. So. Uh, one is 30, going to be 36, and the other one is 34, and 34. Mm -hmm. That's... Are they here, or are they... No, here? one lives in Houston, my daughter lives in Houston, and my son lives in Scottsdale, Arizona. Oh, they mm -hmm. settled for the flesh pots. Boy, you know what, uh-huh. I don't know. They love it here, but I don't know if they'll ever come back until they're older. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love having them here, but... And they have friends here, mm -hmm. but it's, that's life. Hmm? Well, they're yeah, they're alone to you for a while, and then they're yes. off. Hmm? Yes, I don't think you can keep the hold on the kids. Not after 20, Sam. So. <laughs> Gal's got a great future? I think it's going to boom. Instead of 100,000 people, we're going to have like maybe 300. If they can get all the water and all that. Yes, the water is the uh, biggest problem. That's yeah. really the biggest problem. Yeah. But we're getting a lot of people coming through here. Everybody wants to stay that comes. They all want to buy. Yeah. They all want to buy a house. They mm -hmm. want to buy an apartment. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great. I think. Well, I you think were it'll very help. prescient to get in here so early then, kiddo. Yes, I, re <laughs> I really was. And I'm, I thank God for that. Because 42 years ago, it was a little teensy village, mm -hmm. and now it's just grown. It's, what do you call it, a city? It isn't quite a city yet. I don't know. Oh, don't, I don't think it's quite a city. It's mm -hmm. a big town. Uh-huh. It's a big town. Mm -hmm. Do you ever remember the buses? We never had buses. We oh, never no. had. <laughs> we never had bomberos. We didn't have... Uh, Eddie the cruise Rojas and no, the ambulances or never. any of those things. If there was a fire, and everybody get together with a bucket. bucket. Remember when the Maxwells had their fire? No, I don't remember that. In the, in the store. store. Uh -huh. oh, and everybody got... It was the fireworks, you know, mm -hmm. landed on some of their packing material. But the whole street got together with buckets and put it mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. No bomberos. <laughs> but now it's changed. Well, Sirens, my God, uh -huh. <laughs> that bothers me. Life is going to be perhaps easier than it has been. I hope so. Oh, I think it will be. Yeah. You know, illusions never die. You know, <laughs> just but keep, in the meantime, keep life has and been keep going. fun. It's been great. It's mm -hmm. been great. I have mm -hmm. absolutely no regrets. I don't think I could ever fit into another culture. I mean, mm -hmm. I go up to the States and, and I'm frightened of all the machines. <laughs> and uh, this, is, this is the way I want to live. Mm -hmm. This is where I want to be buried, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, 
Oh, we we'll hope it continues for a long, long time. We do thank you for giving oh. us this interview. Oh, Letitia, and it's we been look forward to seeing. The I'm pictures. really honored that you asked me. Oh, I uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think your role's been quite important here. Sometimes I think it has.